Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Derek Hunter from CMS's Division of Quality Reporting, and I will be moderating today's forum. This bi-monthly forum aims to provide national stakeholder organizations, specialty societies, health IT organizations, and EHR vendors with information relevant to CMS's Quality Measurement and Value-Based Incentives Group. Next slide, please. Our program today will include Medicare Promoting Interoperability Program Updates, 2021 QRDA 1 and 3 Implementation Guide Updates, a live demonstration of improvements to the eCQI Resource Center, Quality Payment Program Updates, and Care Compare Updates. We will have a question and answer portion once all presentations have concluded. Please note, to ask a question, you can either submit your question using the chat feature or raise your hand and CMS will unmute your line. For those dialed in via phone, you must have your audio pin entered. If you're listening through your computer speakers and want to ask a question, you must have a working microphone. Andrew Morgan, I will now turn it over to you for your presentation. Thanks, Derek. Um, Yes, my name is Drew Morgan. I work in uh, in the Vicar, um, look, overseeing the hardships and, and reconsiderations for for um, the PI program. But today, I want to talk about. Um, right now, we are in the submission period for promoting interoperability uh, data submission, which is also uh, formerly known as the EHR Incentive Program. So the deadline for hospitals and critical access hospitals um, are to submit their 2020 Medicare promoting interoperability data uh, by March 1st of, of this year. Uh, Medicare eligible hospitals and critical access hospitals uh, must attest to the Quality Net Secure Portal. If you are new to the Quality Net system, you must enroll. And if you if you qualify for both Medicare and Medicaid promoting interoperability programs, you must demonstrate meaningful use to the C, to CMS and not to your state Medicaid agency. And we will need to complete, and you will need to complete your registration at, at a station with CMS. Uh, for more information, you can re visit our page, uh, the registration and attestation page on the Promoting Interoper Interoperability, Interoperability Program website um, on, on this through the CMS website. Um, next slide, please. I turn it over to Shanna. Thank you. And today, um, Yan and I will be presenting on QRDA 1 and QRDA 3 um, implementation guide updates. And Yan is going to begin. Thank you, Shanna. So, good afternoon, uh, good afternoon, everyone. CMS has updated QRDA 1 conformance statement resource to support calendar year 2020 HQR. It is available on the ECQI Resource Center. QRDA error messages are identified with a conformance statement or system requirement specification and a corresponding conformance number. These conformance errors provide a high-level explanation of why a test or production QRDA1 file was rejected and unable to be processed by the HQR system. The conformance statement resource assists data submitters by providing detailed information on how to troubleshoot the most common conformance errors and how to resolve the errors causing rejection of the file. Next, please. The HQR system has been accepting QRDA1 files since November 2020. For more information, a link to the new story released in last November about CMS introduces new reports tool with real-time feedback is provided on this slide. And for testing, Shepard provides implementers with the ability to validate the conformance of QRDA 1 and 3 documents. Next, please. CMS released an update to the 2021 QRDA1 Schematron for HQR. 
The change to the 2021 CMS QDA1 schematron was for the encounter performed template. A new assertion test has been added to enforce there can be only one principal diagnosis for an encounter. This enforcement aligns with the guidance provided in the HL7 QDA1 ST5.2 implementation guide with ERATA. In the QDA1 ST5.2, Principal diagnosis is now represented using the encounter diagnosis QDM template with a rank attribute equal to one. So this means an encounter performed can only have one encounter diagnosis QDM template with a rank attribute equal to one. I will now turn over to Shana to provide other QRDA updates. Thank you. Thanks, and uh, next slide please. I'll be presenting on the updated 2021 CMS QRDA 3 implementation guide for the physician fee schedule final rule. So CMS released an update to the 2021 CMS QRDA 3 implementation guide for eligible clinicians and eligible professionals based on the calendar year 2021 physician fee schedule final rule, which was published in December 2020. Changes to the 2021 CMS QRDA3 IG include updates to Table 14, the Universally Unique Identifiers, or UUID list, for the MIPS Calendar Year 2021 Performance Period ECQM specifications, Table 15, Improvement Activities Identifiers for the MIPS Calendar Year 2021 Performance Period, Table 16, 2021, Promoting Interoperability Objectives and Measures Identifiers, and Table 17, uh, Promoting Interoperability Attestation Statement Identifiers. Next slide, please. The QRDA pages are located under the ECQI Standards section of the ECQI Resource Center. From the main page, you would navigate to the menu to select Resources, ECQI Standards, and QRDA. The QRDA page includes an overview of the QRDA standard, the implementation guides, schematrons, testing files, conformance statements, and QRDA tools and education. Next slide, please. CMS has also created a new QRDA known issues project for both QRDA 1 and QRDA 3 on the Office of the National Coordinator for Health Information Technology Project Tracking System, JIRA. QRDA known issues provide supplemental information for QRDA implementation guides or supporting documents with known technical issues with solutions or the solution is under development and may not yet be available. You must have a JIRA account to track existing issues. No account, however, is required to view the issues. Next slide, please. For questions related to the QRDA implementation guides or schematrons, please visit the ONC Project Tracking System JIRA QRDA project. Next slide, please. And additional ECQM resources are located on the ECQI Resource Center website, the one-stop shop for the most current resources to support electronic clinical quality improvement. Key resources on this site include ECQM specifications and implementation materials for eligible professionals, eligible clinicians, eligible hospitals, and critical access hospitals. ECQI news, events, and standards information, as well as tools, resources, including educational recordings and materials, and opportunities for stakeholder engagement. Next slide, please. We do encourage you to visit and provide feedback on the ECQI Resource Center by emailing us at ecqi-resource-center at hhs.gov. Next slide, please. And along with that, um, we will be presenting today on the ECQI Resource Center improvements. We would like to highlight recent improvements to the ECQI Resource Center. The website is located at ecqi.healthit.gov and serves as the one-stop shop for the most current resources to support electronic clinical quality improvement. 
The new organization of the ECQM individual measure pages and breadcrumbs within the measure collaboration workspace are a result of end user feedback provided during focus groups held last year. CMS encourages your input in order to make the site as useful as possible. Again, please send any news, events, suggestions, or questions you have about the ECQI Resource Center to our email address, ecqi-resourcecenter, sorry, ecqi-resource-center at hhs.gov. I'm now gonna turn the presentation over to Edna Boone to provide a live demonstration of these recent improvements to our website. Thank you, Shauna. All right, we will now kick off the live demonstration. So hopefully folks are able to see my screen. Um, want to start us off with noting that there are some easy access menu options across the top of the site that showcase the various major topic areas within the site. Today, we're highlighting the new organization of the ECQM individual measure pages and the breadcrumbs within the measure collaboration workspace. There are links to the eligible professional and eligible clinician ECQMs as well as the eligible hospital critical access hospital ECQMs under the ECQM menu and also on the large boxes on the home page. These pages are set up in a tab format. The default is the current reporting performance year, and you have the ability to view past years and future years if they are available. The resource tab is the first tab listed and provides a list of key implementation resources used in conjunction with the ECQMs for a given reporting performance year. The ECQM tab provides a dynamic table with the number of ECQMs available for a given reporting performance year and information highlighted on all of the measures. To view an individual measure, click on the measure name and you will note that you now see uh, the detail pages are now also in a tab format. The first tab is the measure tab and this displays much of the information that is included in the measure specification XML. HTML files, and if applicable, provides a telehealth eligible indicator. The second tab, the specifications and data elements, contains the downloadable specifications for a given measure. It also provides a link to the data element repository, which shows all of the data elements used by the selected measure. And if applicable, there will be notes regarding ECQM known issues uh, tracker, should one be in existence for this measure. The release notes tab displays information regarding changes to the measure in the latest publication, as well as an Excel downloadable file of that same information. So next, we will navigate to the Measure Collaboration Workspace and take a look at the new breadcrumbs available in the Data Element Repository. The ECQM Data Element Repository provides additional clarification for all of the data elements associated with ECQMs used in CMS quality reporting programs, as well as the definitions and clinical focus for each data element. The richness of this data within the repository allows end users to digitally explore aspects of data elements. The breadcrumbs provide the, use under, use the end user with a navigational aid and provide context to the data the pages you are viewing. So for instance, I can take a look at the quality data model attributes for the year 2020. Looking at that, I see a list of all of the data quality model attributes. I will select author, date, and time. And as you can imagine, um, this is a very popular uh, attribute because it does log the time at which um, the data element was first entered in clinical software, most likely in EHR. 
I can then, and you see here, I've selected author date time beginning with the breadcrumbs. I can look at um, maybe they documented allergy intolerance. And again, you see that additional breadcrumb. And going deeper, I can say, geez, what was um, perhaps the data element that was logged? Uh, we have uh, an egg substance allergy. And again, you see this breadcrumb trail. At any time, you can go back um, and reselect if you did not mean to look at egg and look at uh, more data elements and attributes. Uh, additionally, um, by next week, we will also be logging the year that's available here. So we hope that you find these various enhancements uh, beneficial to you. As Shauna noted earlier, the Resource Center is constantly updating and changing, and we do try to uh, better meet the needs of our users, so we count on your input. Uh, and again, there is uh, always here on the Contact Us page uh, ways to get in touch with us, uh, email us any news, events, feedback, or questions that you have. So I'll thank you and turn it over to Derek to continue the program. Thank you, Edna. Katie Moore will present next. All right, great. Thanks, Derek. I'm just going to hang on a sec until we get to the right spot. There we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to um, go through pretty quickly several um, quality payment program related updates, but I'll reference, and I know we have um, some links in these slides as well that I'll send you um, to our website for more detailed information on these different topics. Next slide, please. First, um, we're going to talk about 2020 data submission period. So if you've been participating in the quality payment program on, on the MIT side of the program for a while now, you'll know that um, you've probably already realized that our 2020 data submission period opened on January 4th, and it will be open until 8 p.m. on March 31st. And then on our uh, QPP website, we have several resources available that'll walk you through data submission step by step, starting with um, our QPP access guide that will instruct you how to create a HARP account, which will give you your login that will allow you to log into what we call the authenticated experience. So um, where you'll actually do your data submission or, or where you'll be able to um, view data that's been submitted on your behalf by a third party intermediary. So I encourage everybody to go to our QPP website Check out that access guide if you need help creating a login. And then we also have a number of uh, data submission videos that are really helpful. They're just short snippets that um, give you some guidance on, on the specific parts of the data submission process that you may have different questions about. And always, um, I'll say this probably a couple times, but always a good reminder to let folks know that we do have our QPP Service Center agents available. Um, to answer questions, and we probably have that contact info on, on a later slide, but if, if we don't, you can just go to qpp.cms.gov, and um, at the bottom of, I believe, every page is the contact information for our service center. Next slide, please. Okay, so still talking about the 2020 um, performance year. Uh, this slide gives you a bunch of information about our extreme and uncontrollable circumstances uh, policy uh, that we're using um, for our application policy for uh, individuals and uh, that have and groups that have virtual groups, APM entities this year. It's new; they're allowed to submit an application. Um, so, if you are experiencing an extreme and uncontrollable circumstance related to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we have extended the application period until February 1st, so until Monday. And these are for COVID-19 specific applications. Uh, we, the application is now also open to APM entities. So um, if you fall into that group, you can um, submit an application as well. And up here on the screen, you'll see a very important note, and I know we have this in several of our materials. 
but and it's more important to note now that we're in the data submission period so if you haven't submitted data yet um, and and won't be able to because of um, your your practice um, has been impacted by COVID significantly that you won't be able to um, submit your data to us you can go ahead and submit an application um, so groups individuals groups virtual groups and APM entities can submit an application however the act of submitting data to CMS will override that application so if you've already submitted data we will uh, score it and however it's important to note one caveat there is that if you are an APM entity uh, the reverse will happen the act of submitting a application will override data submission it's important to distinguish those, those two specific points so again, that deadline has been extended until Monday, February 1st. Uh, so we, I know we have some links in this slide that you'll be able to click on as well, but if you go to our QPP resource library, we have a zip file that has um, all information, step-by-step -step guide on how to submit this application. It's very simple, uh, very straightforward. You don't need a lot of documentation or details or anything like that. Only takes a few minutes. Um, but again, as I said, with data submission, you have to have um, that access account first to be able to get to the application. So I encourage you if you haven't already set up an account and, and we'll need to do that, it does take a little bit of time. So so encourage folks to get their account set up and get that application in as soon as you can. The deadline is this uh, Monday. And we also have, um, as along with the written how-to guide, we have a video that will walk you through actually what the application looks like. Next slide, please. Great. Okay, so shifting gears a little bit, now we are talking about the 2021 MIPS performance year, so that is where we currently are. <laughs> uh, the 2020 MIPS performance year did start on January 1st, so this is where you'll be working throughout the rest of this year and collecting data throughout the, the year to submit to us in 2020. And so if you're if you're sitting here thinking, well, am I in this year? Do I do I have to submit data next year? Uh, we have a really a uh, simple and useful QPP participation status tool that um, you can enter your information and it will tell you exactly how you need to participate um, in this program if you are eligible. And we have recently uploaded to our QPP resource library a number of uh, quick start guides that'll really help you get started uh, in the program. They're just short, shorter guides that'll, that'll get you started right off since we are in January and the program year has started. Next slide, please. Okay, this uh, slide we just wanted to highlight, um, and this is our uh, 2021 MIPS annual call for measures and activities, and this is specific to um, promoting interoperability measures that we're talking about here. Um, the quad, we will have some information available um, probably next month um, related to the call for quality measures. Um, but this slide I just wanted to note is specific to promoting interoperability performance category, as well as activities for the improvement activities performance category. So this uh, call does begin on Monday as well, so February 1st, and will close on July 1st. Um, this is an opportunity to propose any new measures or activities for MIPS um, that would be used in um, next year or future years of the program. And we do have a, a fact sheet and other guides available. I, I'm sorry, I should have checked this. I, I don't think we have them up just yet, but they will be available um, when the call opens on Monday. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, this gives you some information about our, our uh, merit-based incentive payment system value pathways. So. MIPS value pathways, or what we refer to as our MVPs. Um, so if you've participated in the program for a few years, you may have remembered when we first introduced MVPs and we had originally intended for implementation to begin uh, this year with the 2021 performance year, but given um, everything across the country everybody's dealing with addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, we have um, pushed implementation back a little bit so that we, that 
clinicians are able to focus on on their patients at this time, and then we'll um, we've we've done a few things in the meantime until implementation begins. We've um, in our 2021 final rule, we did give some more details on our our guiding principles and detailed criteria um, to give people more information on what we're looking for. Um, we have included in our guiding principles really looking for the patient voice, um, subgroup reporting. Um, and we're continuing to take in different stakeholder uh, comments on these different areas. So right now we have available, um, we do have a brand new web page open um, for our MVPs on our um, QPP website that details a lot of the criteria and the specific process for submitting an MVP candidate. Uh, to us for consideration. Um, so encourage folks to go there, check out all of that detailed information. And we do have on our QPP webinar library, uh, more of a deep dive um, webinar that we did earlier this year, actually not earlier this year, end of last year, um, that gives all of the more details on, on MIPS value pathways. So encourage folks to check all of that information out as well. Next slide. One more thing for MVPs before I talk about what you're seeing right now. Um, we did also, um, at the beginning of this year, we did have a uh, MVPs town hall event that was talking about future year uh, potential policies and proposals for, uh, for MVPs. So encourage everyone to check that out as well. We have just posted the recording and transcript and slides for that event as well. So everything MVP you could possibly be looking for is on our, on our QPP website. And then just real quick, last slide here, just wanted to make sure folks have seen this. Um, it's a save the date. We do have um, specific dates for our 2021 CMS Quality Conference. This is a really great event every year that has um, a ton of different information is shared and some great dialogue happens here. And of course, just like everything else this year, it's going to be different than it has been in years past. So this conference is fully virtual. So it's March 2nd through 3rd. So it's only two days this year. Typically in the past, it's, it's been three days, um, but it will be fully virtual. If you go to the website, you'll see here, so www.cmsqualityconference.com. It'll give you um, all of the information you're looking for about the conference. But I encourage everybody, if, if you are able to, to register. Um, it is a free event, uh, and there's a lot of good information. It'll be organized by different uh, participation tra or um, different tracks of of the conference, so you can get to the information that is most applicable to you or that you're most interested in. Um, and they are going to have a really neat um, virtual exhibit booth and um, gallery walk, so poster session as well as the typical um, discussion sessions that that we have. So. Um, recommend everybody check that out as well and i believe i'm going to uh, hand it off to julie to give us a quick update about um, care compare thanks yes thanks katie um yes this is the last slide before we get to the question and answer section um and i just wanted to um give an update that the preview period for a Medicare Care Compare Doctors and Clinicians, this is formerly known as Physician Compare, is officially open again as of yesterday, January 25th. Doctors and clinicians can now preview 2019 quality payment program performance information before it will appear on clinician and group profile pages on Medicare Care Compare and in the provider data catalog which replaces the downloadable database. Doctors and clinicians can access the secured preview through the QPP website. To learn more about the 2019 QPP performance information that is available, as well as the 2018 clinical utilization data, which will be added to the provider data catalog, you can visit the Care Compare Doctors and Clinicians Initiative page on the cms.gov website. There are also resources such as the user guide and video for doctors and clinicians to help them through accessing the preview period and navigating data on the website. 
accountable care organizations can preview their performance information via their 2019 MITS performance feedback reports and a list of ACO performance information that is being targeted for public reporting is available as well on the Care Compare Doctors and Clinicians Initiative page on the CMS.gov website. The preview period will close on March 25th at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and this would be 5 p.m. Pacific time. So that will give doctors and clinicians 60 days to review their data before we make it public. I would like to note that the 2019 QPP performance information is targeted for public reporting in 2021, and it will be added to Care Compare and or the PDC after all targeted reviews are completed. If you have opened, have an open targeted review request, you will still be able to preview your 2019 QPP performance information during the doctors and clinicians preview period. If you have any questions about public reporting or the preview period, please contact the team at QPP at cms.hhs.gov. And that's all I have. Thank you, Julie. Thank you to all of today's presenters. We will now move on to the question and answer portion of the webinar. As a reminder to ask a question, you can either submit your question using the chat feature or raise your hand and CMS will unmute your line. For those dialed in via phone, you must have your audio pen entered. If you're listening through your computer speakers and want to ask a question, you must have a working microphone. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, before we move into the Q&A, um, a couple questions did come up in the chat box. Um, so while we are gathering those, I did want to flag uh, that the slides from today's presentation will both be, or will be available on both the Promoting Interoperability Program events webpage um, and the QPP webinar library as well. Um, they should be available in the next couple of days. Uh, so just wanted to, um, I know we got a lot of questions about that. Um, while we wait for phone questions, we do have a couple of questions. Um, the first, Edna, I believe this one is for you. It came up during your live demo. Um, can you, what exactly does the telehealth indicator mean um, if it says yes? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, that There is telehealth guidance, so the first thing I would say is make sure um, as an end user you take a look at that telehealth guidance. That just indicates that that particular measure is eligible uh, for telehealth. So not all of the ECQMs, obviously nothing on the hospital side is eligible for test, uh, telehealth, but on the eligible professional, eligible clinician side, uh, many of the measures are eligible for telehealth, and this uh, allows one to know if that ECQM is specifically uh, in that category. Thanks, Edna. Joy, do we have any questions on the phone? We do. Cynthia Arnold, your line is unmuted and you can ask your question. And Cynthia, it does look like you may be self-muted, so please make sure that your audio pin is entered and that you're unmuted, and then you may ask your question. We can move on to someone else. So, Tammy Alvarado, your line is unmuted, and you can ask your question. Tammy Alvarado, your line is unmuted and you can ask your question. Okay, it looks like we may have lost her. Um, Anna Maria Bonilla, your line is unmuted and you can ask your question. Looks like we're having a couple audio issues, so we can go back to the chat questions and then work through these phone line issues. Okay. 
That sounds good. Um, Katie, our next quest, couple of questions for you for QPP. Um, for, 20, for the 2020 reporting year, uh, do points for the improvement activities category under MIPS also uh, include those for MSSP ACOs? Sorry, can you repeat that? Sure. Um, for the 2020 performance year for QPP permits, um, do MSSP ACOs, do those count, do they, do they receive points for the IA category? Are they allowed to attest basically or submit data? I believe so and I think I can check. I can. We can follow up on that as well if you can get the name of the person. But I believe um, participating in an ACO gets them certain points for IA. But I'd have to double check with our SSP team on that. Okay, perfect. I will um, get that information for you. Awesome. Thanks. Um. Sure. Our next question uh, for QPP, and again, this may be a question that we need we need to follow up on. It came in while you were talking about 2020 data, but it's a 2021 question. Um, if you are a QP in 2021 in the shared savings program, do you also have to submit MIPS for MIPS or just APP? And this is for 2021? Yep. Yes, and I'll, um, can you say it one more time? And then I'm gonna, um, follow up with this person as well. I believe I know the answer, but I definitely want to check with our CMMI team to make sure I'm getting you the right information. <laughs> sure, no problem. It says, if you are a QP in 2021 in a shared savings program, you have to submit MIPS for MIPS or for MIPS data um, or only APP. Okay, I believe it's just just the APP. Yeah, so if you're, if you're a QP, you're exempt from MIPS. If you achieve QP okay. status. Okay, perfect. And we'll get you their information as well. Okay, great. Um, Joy, do we have anyone on Thanks. the phone? Thanks. Do we have anyone on the phone, Joy? There's currently no one on the phone line. Okay. Our next question is for um, the QRDA 3 and or 1 and 3 updates. Um, regarding the changes to the QRDA 3 file updates, is there a test website to validate the submissions? So there is the um, QPP developer preview website that you can test your DA3 submissions to QPP. Um, I can provide that link to catch on to send out. Great. That would be great. Thanks, Shauna. We can follow up with that person as well. Um, okay. We have a care compare question. Um, with regard to care compare, similar to the star rating uh, for certain measures reported during 2018, how um, does CMS determine which of the reported measures are to be public facing? Hi, yes, to meet, um, to be publicly reported, measures must meet very stringent public reporting standards, and generally that tends to mean that the measures must be statistically reliable, valid, and also they must be um, easily understandable by um, beneficiaries who are looking at the measure data. Um, so, yep. And we will continue to do that um, with the 2019 data and going forward. And this is in statute, so, um, does that answer your question? We will make sure that that answers their question for them. Thanks, Julie. Um, okay, anyone on the phone yet? There's currently no one on the phone line. And just as a reminder to ask a question, you can either submit your question using the chat feature or raise your hand and we will unmute your line. And if you are dialed in via phone, you must have your audio pin entered. If you're listening through your computer speakers and want to ask a question, you must have a working microphone. Okay, thanks, Joy. Um, another care compare question that just came in regarding the care compare preview data. 
Were there ECQ and performance benchmarks that determine quality star rating? Um, can you repeat the last part of that question again? Yes. It just said, regarding the Care Compare preview data, were there ECQ and performance benchmarks that determined uh, quality star rating? I believe so. Um, there is a methodology on the five-star rating system that you can find on the um, Care Compare website. Um, for doctors and clinicians on the cms.gov website, sorry. Um, and it, it goes into great detail on how the five-star rating um, is calculated and how physicians perform is definitely used in that methodology. Okay, thanks, Julie. Um, our next question is for Katie and maybe Drew um, also as well, but can you, just go back over and we can go to the slide if you would prefer that we do. Can you go over the extreme and uncontrollable um, exception application and who it's applicable for for MIPS and um, how it's different from being available for CAUSE in hospitals? Sure. Thanks, Ali. Um, this is Katie. So I can speak to the, um, to the MIPS exception application. Um, so it's available for individuals, groups, virtual groups, and ATM entities. Um, it was, so it's not, it's not, um, it's not at the facility level. So Drew might be able to speak to that, um, that part of the question better than I can. Um, but any, any group. So if there's a group that practices at, uh, together at the, um, whatever the facility is at the CA, um, it could apply at the group level. Um, but it's not based on your facility, if that helps. And Drew, I don't know if there's anything um, different on your well, side we need to say. Yeah, for, for promoting interoperability PI program, we don't have ECEs. What we have is a hardship um, exception application that is normally so it's a little bit different. So it's it's normally filled out after submission period has closed. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. I think ECEs are are done prior to submitting. Um, typically, yeah. Typically, yeah, so, so, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so yeah, and so my my hardships are, are the facility level is for the eligible hospitals and the critical access hospitals. Okay, thanks. I hope um, whoever asked that question in the chat, if you want to call in, if you had any um, any more specifics to that, I, th I think may have been putting two of the two of our policies together there. But if if you're able to call in and we can speak to that a little more, if that's helpful. Okay, thanks, Katie and, and Joy. Do we have any um, callers on the line yet? We do not at the moment. Okay. Um, another question that came in, Katie, can you um, just briefly, we got a question about the QCP 2019 performance results. Can you um, just maybe quickly explain where they are, where they can be found? Sure. For the, I'm assuming this is asking about our, um, so for 2019 performance feedback yes. information, yes. is that what Correct. the question is? Oh, okay. Uh, correct. Yeah. Sure. So for, okay, great. So um, for 2019 information, you would have to um, log in through QPP website, um, through the login. Um, so it's the same log, when we say log in, that means the same, you go to the same place for data submission that you go to see your feedback. So it's all in the same system, all in one place. Um, so all of your 2019 feedback and information should be available in there as well, as, as well as the, uh, corresponding payment adjustment for that year. Okay, thanks, Katie. Um, a couple more QPP questions and coming Allie, in. Sorry, oh, uh, yeah, okay, sorry, really quick to that one. If they were asking about like 2019 experience report, we don't have that available just yet. Or maybe that was the question. Were they asking about the experience report? Sorry, is this in the chat? No, I believe it was feedback, yes. 
I'll double okay, check it. Perfect. Yep, no, that's great. Yep, you just log in and and um, all of your feedback should show up with your account. Okay, perfect. Um, and then a couple more QPT questions coming in. Um, can you confirm um, if high priority measure bonus points will be available for ACOs reporting um, the CMS web interface in 2020 before 2020? Oh, I'm sorry, Ali. I'm going to take that one back to the AC, the SSP team. Okay, okay, we'll get you their information. Great. Um, I believe we have a caller on the phone. Please, is there someone on the line? Um, we did, and then she unraised her hand. Okay. Um, one last QPP question, and Katie, I don't know if this is um, if there's a solid answer to this, but um, after submitting an extreme uh, and controllable, uncontrollable circumstance application, um, is there an average um, time on, on how long it takes to receive a response from CMS? Um, these, so, so especially since now that all of them, um, all the ones we're receiving now are COVID related, um, we're able to turn them around really quickly, usually the same day. Um, one last check. Are there any questions um, that anyone would like to ask over the phone? Okay. Um, we do not have any new questions. Line. Okay. Thanks, Joy. Um, well, that is it um, for questions on the chat. Um, Derek, I think we can pass it back to you to uh, close out the call. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. CMS will share the slides from today's forum in the coming days. In the meantime, if you have any specific questions, please email cmsqualityteam at ketchum.com. The next CMS Quality Programs bi-monthly forum is tentatively scheduled for March. The CMS will share more information on the next forum when it becomes available. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.